So, yeah, I think we are ready to start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Women in Tech Cyprus Limassol Meetup. I'm uh, very happy to see you here. Uh, today we will have very interesting agenda. I will uh, briefly to go through. We will have a chat, um, uh, fire chat with uh, uh, Tatiana Romanyuka and Natalia Miranchuk. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and Gala. Uh, then we will have some reports uh, about uh, um, how to uh, how to negotiate your salary, and uh, we'll uh, get some information about uh, the uh, gender pay gap uh, in video game industry, and of course, network. Uh, before to start, uh, let me. Uh, say thank you to our uh, sponsors today. We have uh, Yummy Kitchen who make all this delicious food and Prosecco. And also, as you see, these beautiful presents from, uh, from Agar Agaratopia. You can find some samples and uh, promo code for discount. So I think uh, you will enjoy the online luxury shopping afterwards. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in the beginning, let me introduce Tanya Romanyuka uh, with a welcome speech. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tanya. I'm head of operations uh, in uh, Tech Island and uh, co-leader of uh, Women in Tech uh, community. We are running together with uh, my beautiful partner, Gala. And you know, it was a really interesting journey. We, uh, we met with Gala through LinkedIn. And uh, uh, w in April, we just sit together. We were thinking what we should do. We have, uh, you know, the uh, mutual vision and mission on uh, empowering women in career, and especially women in tech, as we are working in tech. And uh, we started our thinking that, you know, we should bring the global women in tech communities in Cyprus. Like we shouldn't, uh, you know, create the will from the beginning. We should just uh, uh, sync with those who are already doing something and then bring in here. We started our journey with uh, women in tech uh, global community. You know, we started the discussion. It was a long qualification process for the ambassadors. Then we were creating strategy. Then we were a lot of onboarding calls. So really, from April, it took us almost six months. And yesterday, we finally uh, were approved as Cyprus chapter of uh, Women in Tech global community. Here should go applause. <laughs> yes, and uh, we are uh, co-ambassadors of uh, this uh, community and what it brings us. Like in details, uh, we're gonna have in on 16th of uh, November, we're gonna have our next meetup, and in details, we will share uh, some more information. But in a nutshell, we are bringing mentorship platform in Cyprus, which is available uh, like for all of you. Uh, some of you can apply as mentors, some of you can apply as mentees. Uh, on the global, you, you will have access to global experts in different fields uh, because this community is uh, um, in 46 countries and it has more than 200,000 of women so this is really amazing and inspiring through this community will be uh, we will be bringing some educational programs more than just networking events we will do some reports so let's say we have a plenty of actions further so uh, stay with us uh, uh, invite other ladies, uh, and not only ladies, to our meetups, but invite uh, ladies to join our uh, Telegram group. And uh, today we also represent uh, another community, which is Women Network, and Gala will share a bit more. You know, we are with Gala monopolizing <laughs> women in the global communities. Uh, we really want to bring more and more opportunities for uh, all of us who are here, uh, 
Uh, we want to grow together. We want to inspire each other. And today is a kind of, of uh, uh, such meetup where we can get you know some real data. Uh, we will get some tips and tricks and strategies on how to you know excel uh, in your uh, wages and uh, in your profits. I mean in your salaries. And uh, today we will also have a beautiful uh, uh, Natalia, who, is, uh, uh, who has launched uh, recently Famtech startup, close to all of our hearts. So stay with us. Thank you for coming. Gala. Thanks a lot, Tanya. It was really exciting. Uh, Nadia, could you please help me with the presentation? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Okay, let me introduce myself. I'm Gala Grigorieva, the Chief Marketing Officer of Xterra, a global advertising and CPA network. So yeah, we're working in tech. And it, it, it's been a really interesting journey uh, with Tanya. And uh, we've been in communication with both uh, global and prominent organizations. And today we are uh, presenting uh, one of them. And at our next meetup, we will show the presentation of another organization and uh, its benefits as well. So let me just walk, uh, you walk you through these, uh, well, seven or eight slides uh, to show you who we are. So we are Women Tech Cyprus team. Uh, it's me, <laughs> Tanya, you know her already, and Nadia, Nadia, please sir, just show up. Uh, it's our partnership manager, so if you want to partner with us, you know, sponsor our meetups or provide gifts or discounts on a permanent basis, please just go to Nadia and ask her. Uh, Nadia is uh, in our uh, Telegram chat and also in the LinkedIn group, so uh, we, can, uh, we can get in touch there. And please next. Mm -hmm. So our Women Tech Network is powered by Coding Girls, uh, and its mission is uh, to empower women in tech through leadership development, professional growth, mentorship, and networking events. Mm -hmm. yeah, next. So it has uh, 72 members in uh, 172 countries and more than uh, 8,000 ambassadors, and you can become an ambassador of this organization as well. And here we have individual member uh, opportunities, so you can scan this QR code to get access to the website of the organization. And you can find a lot of information there about the mentoring program, and you can join it as well. It's 100% uh, free. And I'm, for example, the mentor of this organization and of uh, Women in Tech Global, too. So you can do that for free, uh, and you can become a mentee. And they also have a very um, interesting and really good working algorithm of matching, you know, pairing uh, mentors with mentees. Uh, for example, you can state your purposes and goals. You can state what, you, what you're looking for. For example, you're, you want to uh, uh, found, found the startup or you would like to uh, start your venture or you would like to uh, advance your career and you can find uh, mentors in your in your field like project management product ownership or marketing or development and so on so forth uh, you can also attend uh, our events in person events like meetups like this and we're gonna have more on a monthly basis and there will be an interesting event uh, for Christmas for sure uh, you can also uh, join the council membership program and publish your uh, PR materials, articles, and share your knowledge with the uh, community of the network online. And you can also find a lot of, you know, like personal stories, reports, uh, stats, and things like this uh, on the website of Women Tech Network. And you can also become a professional uh, member of the organization. Uh, something is free and something is paid uh, on a yearly basis, but it depends just on what you are looking for. You know, like access to, well, premium access to mentors you would like to choose from uh, to avoid pairing, for example, or to get tickets uh, to their global events like uh, Women Tech Network Global Conference. And you can also, for example, nominate yourself or your colleagues uh, for the global awards, uh, so the nominations were open until uh, the 1st of October, so we're waiting for the next year. 
And uh, they also have uh, <coughs> benefits for companies, yeah, like uh, company opportunities, also to become a network partner. So by becoming our partner, uh, the partner and sponsor of our meetups, you are, you know, you can become, your company can become uh, a network partner. And you can get event tickets for your ERG uh, programs. And you can also sponsor Women in Tech Global Conference and Women in Tech Global Awards. So it's uh, absolutely you know, accessible, available. For example, at Stera, the company I work for is uh, sponsoring this organization as well. And the next slide, please. Yeah, let me just walk you through the agenda. So, <laughs> well, we started a bit late, but it's okay for Cyprus. Siga, siga. So now we're having a fireside chat with Natalia Miranchuk. Uh, Tatiana introduced her. Yeah, some more, more hands to Natalia. <laughs> Ah, please, yeah, here. Mm -hmm. So then we're gonna have a short break, uh, and please don't be shy to enjoy our food provided by Yami Kitchen and Prosecco. So yeah, please don't be too shy. And then we're gonna have a workshop uh, by Value Value, uh, the recruiting company. Uh, so how to negotiate your salary without falling into the bias trap. And then the gender pay gap in the video games industry. So raise your hands, those of you who, are, who work in the games industry, probably. Oh, okay. So we have, we have a few ladies here. Great. But I think this will be interesting for everyone here. And then a networking hour, or probably half an hour. So let's let's see how it goes. Okay, so I think that we're going to start, but please first scan this QR code to join our Telegram chat and LinkedIn group. Uh, yeah, feel free to address, uh, feel free to, to drop a message there if you have any ideas about topics to speak about, or if, for example, you would like to discuss something, or you would like to become our partner, so we are open for... Uh, such kind of discussions. And use Women Tech Cyprus on Instagram or whatever you use. <laughs> so let's start our fireside chat then. Great. And uh, yeah, uh, Tanya, please come in. Oh, of course. Thank you, sponsors. But I've already mentioned them, I think, and Nadia too. Uh, Agoratopia has prepared nice gifts for everyone here. Just uh, check them out. Really nice. And we also have Yama Kitchen. Uh, that provided uh, food and, and Prosecco. Yeah, enjoy. Thanks. Mm -hmm. we ha uh, yeah, we have a discount. This is our first partner, I would say. So we have sponsors and we also have our first partner providing a 10% um, discount uh, until the 20th of November. Yeah, so it's our first uh, try. Uh, yeah. Most of you probably know Brain Rocket uh, some time ago uh, launched their own beauty salon. Uh, and uh, they provided for our community 10% discount, so feel free uh, to use. We will share in our chat in Telegram the promo code. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll try and we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm sure that we will proceed, you know, we will make it for, for every uh, month. Okay, thank you very much. So let's start. Natalia, thank you very much that you've come to our meetup, that you joined us, and your presentation at the Reflect Festival was just, you know, amazing and very inspirational. And I think that your journey is very inspirational itself. Uh, so, uh, Natalia Maranchuk is the founder and CEO of the Sola app. Uh, it's a parenting AI-based uh, tool to help parents, to help women, first of all, right, uh, to survive, <laughs> I would say. Be fair, right? Yeah, <laughs> to balance, you know, in this uh, yeah, severe world. Uh, so uh, please uh, tell us a bit more about yourself, about your journey. Thank you so much. And um, actually, thank you for having me here, because um, usually this big uh, support of women is something which is driving me forward and like making whole my life because I think that I'm going to tell you a couple words of my life and my story and you'll see how people are supporting me through it all. So um, I'm 38 and um, for more than 17 years I've been doing projects in maternity well-being and care. 
I started in Belarus in 2007 with a newborn photography. So I was the one who actually brought the newborn photography to the post-Soviet countries. And uh, I had in my hands 3,500 newborn kids. So that was the first thing that I got my love to pregnancy, postpartum, to newborns, to everything related to the small babies. I think that is something from the past lives that I had, because the first time I, I took it, the newborn baby in my hands, I felt like I knew everything about it. And uh, when I was working with women, I was actually working as a doula, because I was working together with a photographer, and I had to communicate with moms during pregnancy. I had to support them, uh, to tell them which hospital to choose, whose doctor to go to, and like what to do. And after the newborn baby was arrived, I was entering the family in the first week of mom being at home. And I had to work with them and help them with uh, breastfeeding, with sleeping, with engaging father in the family. And after I had done everything like that, they said, okay, we don't mind. We don't need any more like photos or whatever. It's all done. But it, then it grew up in big social initiatives. I, uh, actually, we covered the hospitals with all the newborn photograph photographs. And we had these like, letters from moms, like, if not your photos, I would not survive in the hospital. Like, thank you for the support that you are making. And I was like, wow, this is something which is doing more than just a photo. And I started to grow it up in the social initiatives, making big uh, exhibitions, um, talking to you and raising awareness to maternity well-being and care in general in Belarus. And um, uh, then we have made a big prog project, Mama Pro, which had we had big conferences with 1,500 pregnant women inside. That was amazing because, like, when you saw them all sitting together and like getting out of the hall, that was something really beautiful. And we're making them a platform to communicate to the doctors just to make them this piece of regular, normal communication, because like usually doctors speak the language that we do not understand. And um, it grew in big platform. We had to. to 250,000 women inside, and we were doing an app and so on, working with the United Nations, with the World Health Organization, but actually we were changing the system of healthcare in maternity. We were changing the protocols, we were helping to open the hospitals to see what's happening inside and so on. I have my personal story, like the doctors told me I'm not gonna have children since I was 16. I have two, they are nine and a half and four, and uh, I'm not using pharmacy for more than 15 years, so I basically healed my body through yoga, homeopathy, osteopathy, and like things like that. So it was a long way to go, um, but actually right now I'm really happy that I have taken that path. And um, my two boys were home birth, and my second one was born in Hallandale in Florida, and it was beautiful home birth, but I actually have experienced the postpartum depression with this one, because I came back from Florida from the US, the father of the child met me in the airport, brought me home and said that he leaves me for another woman. And that's when it all began like uh, something that I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I have $100 on the bank account, I have one six-year-old, and uh, I have one of one month and a half, so what shall I do? And I would say that the support of other women was the key. Because by that time, as I was practicing mindfulness for many years, I already knew how to ask for help. And when I was working with women, that was the first thing I was teaching them for, asking for help. Because like moms, especially the first time moms, they're trying to do their best to be the best moms, trying to so hard, so passionate, trying them all, and they don't ask for help. And by the time they ask for help, it's usually too late. So every third woman in the world is suffering from the postpartum depression, which is diagnosed. It means that every second has underdiagnosed one. But it's the stigma that doesn't help us to talk about that and like the social thing that we just don't raise this question. We think it's normal that we feel like that, but it's not. So what I did, I took uh, two weeks of crying because I knew I'm a coach myself and a doula myself, so I know how to work with emotions and I've been working with psychologists for many years. So for two, year, two, two weeks I was crying I asked my mom to come, and uh, she could stay just for three days, and she said, I cannot anymore, I can't see that. She laughed, and like after these two weeks, I just grabbed my kids and went to my friend, 
uh, knocked at the door and said, I'm moving to you with two of my kids or is I moving out of the ninth floor? And uh, they took me to their house. And actually for like three months, they were taking care of me and helping me with, with the children and with like my feelings and everything. And uh, I came back to work. That was the trick number two and the like thing that I usually like talk to women about is that we need to switch from this maternity routine things. The cultural thing is that we're not used to being just moms. If we were grown up in like Eastern cultures where you're grown up as a woman to give birth to children and that's it, then it would be easier for us. But we are all social women, we are working, we have this social thing, we know how to earn money, we need this communication with our like people we know, we need this feeling that we are updated at our work, we are good professionals and everything. So I usually tell moms that from three months of their maternity, they need at least four hours of their own time where they don't think about their children. Like I was actually for half a year, was paying all the money that I was earning to my nanny because I knew I'm gonna go crazy if I'm not gonna do that. So four hours per week? Four hours per day. Per day, oh my God. <laughs> so <laughs> then it w went to six <laughs> hours, so I said that I love my kids before 10 a.m. <laughs> and after 4 p.m. Okay. And that was the, the thing that I knew from my first pregnancy already. Uh -huh. And it saved me actually, because there was time when I was not thinking that I am a mom. Uh -huh. I'm a professional, I'm doing big projects. We have launched a big visa card, like MasterCard and Visa for moms in Belarus. We have made the boxes for moms in maternity hospitals with all the initial things. We have launched a big UNFPA program for moms, like educational things, starting from pregnancy to the postpartum period. So that was actually the thing that helped me out as well. But and I also ran a school because I couldn't afford a private school, and I made a school <laughs> with my friends. So there were sixty families in there. But then the things in the country were getting worse and worse. Like I was like not touched by anyone, but still I didn't feel myself anymore safe. So almost two years ago, I just came to the island because I knew the, the island before because I was doing some photo shootings over here through the years with the war gaming. They were my clients, so I knew the island. And uh, I decided that I'm gonna move and I have to start everything from scratch. So I stepped off from all the projects in Belarus, moved to the island. I f first, I came over here, found a job, got an offer, uh, sold a school at home uh, in Belarus and in January I moved to, to the island. So when I moved over here, that was one month before the war and I was uh, a business development director at the Waldorf School at that time. And when the war started, uh, we had to do the island private school. So I think you have heard about that. So it took us, I was, uh, me and Masha actually was the two people besides Alexei Gubarev who supported Alex, uh, the first idea of making a school in three months. Everyone said like, are you crazy? And we were like, didn't we manage to do the projects in a short time perspective? <laughs> So that was a hard work of this half a year, but we managed to do it. And through that time I was integrated in the community. I was working with IT companies. And I knew that I'm not gonna stop doing projects for moms because I know this thing from very beautiful birth. I know their stories. I know like thousand stories of moms. And uh, I've been doing projects for inclusive maternity, wheelchair moms and those who don't see, don't hear and so on to support them. So I was fundraising for Sola. Because when we were working with them, we saw that it's not enough for a woman to have just to talk with her OB doctor or midwife. She actually needs a big mama. Someone who she can ask any questions she has, anytime she needs that, and from whom she can get the support and the warm words. Actually, in like in, uh, in the perspective of um, like family circle, that should be your real mom, but we d it's broken right now. So we need to create a, a digital you just mama. Don't have you know it's yeah, a tight of course, connection with your yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we are creating a big mama for moms yeah. uh, with AI right now, and we're trying to make it like a personal advocate for mom who is always on her side no matter what, because this there is this voice in the head which is always saying you're not enough, mm -hmm. you know, not enough good mom 
not enough good woman, not enough good, enough good girlfriend, not enough good employee, whatever. Somehow it works, like psychologists, they have made lots of research. It's okay in man's head, somehow. <laughs> they think that they're okay from the very beginning. <laughs> and it's somehow broken in our, our female head and we have to fix it all the time. And uh, we're trying to make a product which is going to make this voice in a mom's head saying that you're okay. Even if the house is ruined by your children and you didn't cook today and they just add some ice cream and it's whatever. You are enough because you are bringing a new life yeah. over here. Right. Just enough as you are. So how does it work? I mean, what challenges, you know, um, have led you to develop to the development of, of this app? So what features are most valuable for your audience? I think that the main idea mm -hmm. of this like maternity thing is to make prevention of the postpartum depression. Because I think that what helped me out, it took me one year and a half to recover. So I had the tools. I had, I knew how to ask for help. Because usually moms come out of that three to five years. Mm -hmm. And usually they don't come out. They just go from postpartum depression to maternity burnout. And that's where we are. And we don't feel it. We feel it only when we hate, start to hate our children, actually, or ourselves. It's like two ways. So what we're trying to build, and we have beautiful mentor in neuroscience um, right now, Katerina Lingo, that we're trying to build this during the pregnancy, this path of finding the tools that are working with you right now and straight right now, so that in a postpartum period, Sola could help mom with something which is already working with her. I mean, like, for example, if we know that during the pregnancy she didn't feel well and the warm bath with salt helped her out, then when she doesn't feel like in the postpartum period, because usually this is the most difficult thing, Sola has to remi remember her about that, saying, like, look, it used to work with you, maybe it's time. Because I've been working with brands. I've been working with, like, Pampers, Philips Seven, Danone, Huggies, and all of that. So I know how to B2B is done. They are all selling these beautiful pictures with pink uh, babies, newborn ones, smiling mom, and blah, blah, blah. And when we give birth, we get these, like, sleepless nights, painting chest, and not understandable relationship with your partner because it has to change somehow and you don't know how it's going to be and it doesn't matter if it's your first child, the second child, or we have moms with a fourth and a fifth child which are asking questions as well and having the anxiety. And uh, uh, the postpartum is something that we are not ready for. Actually, maturity is something that, because a mom during the pregnancy, she's so afraid of this physical thing like, we don't know what we would expect. This is, like, physiologically the period that we cannot predict how it's going to go. So we buy everything. And we cost in the user acquisition the most money you could ever pay. And after, what moms are saying is that they feel like they, nobody needs them anymore. Because it was too much attention to them. And then they lost it. And they are staying at home, unsocialized was this day after day of the same things, th the same routines you have. That's why I'm saying about nanny or someone, because in ancient times, women did not bring up children on their own. So what we have right now, when we are leaving our countries, going to other places to work, like uh, meeting our partners in other countries and like staying in different cultures, we are alone. So it used to be that you always had other women around. So today you cook, tomorrow someone is cooking, today you're playing with a kid, tomorrow you're cooking, to then you're washing, then you're, so you're switching, your mind is switching. And right now we have this day after day of the same picture. And like in three months, we feel like, okay, give me back my life. That's not what I was expecting for. <laughs> That's, and actually like Sola is aimed to bring more joy and satisfaction with your maternity, because if, it's going to be helping you to mention what you have succeed in. Like, you didn't do it today, okay, let's look we could be before what you were good at. What's, what's, what is something that is giving you joy right now? Just let alone uh, everything, just leave it and go and do something for what you need right now. So, even if woman is hurt by someone, like, because I'm working as a soul myself, all my friends who have children or who are pregnant, they are calling me, 
like saying that to me and I'm working with them as a doula because doula is something that gives you this warm hug of I can hear you. This is the bullshit really. Yeah, you feel sucks. <laughs> So Listen, I, I totally understand what you are talking about. I also went probably, you know, through uh, the same path with a uh, second child when uh, you thought that, uh, okay, second is much easier. You have like the first one, uh, it's, uh, you know, how it works. And then uh, uh, you realize that, oh my God, uh, now my free time, like there is no free time, it's cut at... Uh, to uh, to kids, uh, to husband, to work, to anything else, but except me. You don't so belong to you anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't belong, and uh, you didn't expect that. You always think, yes. Oh my God, uh, really? Where is first? There is second. So what's the problem? Uh, I'm interested, you know, in terms of uh, soul, uh, uh, how the user case works. So how it works. I mean, in practice, uh, how? What if uh, I'm I don't know, pregnant mom, uh, or I'm thinking about child, and I want to understand uh, the real life behind, uh, you know, this uh, delivery. Uh, can Sola help me? And uh, what if I don't know really uh, how to ask the question? You know, because when we are um, pregnant, uh, uh, everyone is telling us that we should know, let's say, foundation related to delivery or then to upbringing, you know, when... Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, there, there is nothing uh, about this, um, your personal connection and how you can work uh, with yourself or with your partner, how, how you can involve uh, uh, the that to his uh, duties and f and for them to feel that it's okay that it's like his responsibility it's not that he is helping uh, so uh, how <laughs> yes 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 i don't need help like i need uh, partner next to me right who is sharing responsibility so uh, how sola can direct you to the right way it should be done so that you will not end up in this uh, maternity burnout? I would say that we are just at the beginning of the way, of course, right? So we're just one year old. <coughs> but the main idea of what we are like prototyping and doing is that it's more about coaching way. So what is coaching and good thing about coaching? Coaching doesn't tell you what to do. It's a way of asking you questions and supporting you on your thoughts. But besides that, of course, Soul is providing you with like different like information, which is created by real experts like doulas, midwives, and parenthood educators, so who are on the side of mom, right? So we have cases, for example, when mom is saying, my husband doesn't look at, at me anymore as to a beautiful woman. How do I handle that? So what's the best thing Sola can do is say, I'm so sorry for you. And then she develops this dialogue, just accepting the feelings of this person. And a woman starts to talk, 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 talk. And then she actually, we actually, when we work like that and talk like that, we actually have all our answers in the head. So what we need to do is to support on that way, just providing with some more information and we can g uh, give her some content side is in straight ahead in the chat and so on. And we're gonna implement more and more coaching techniques inside. <coughs> but basically, the first idea of right now to become a friend. Because like, I just came back from the Google conference uh, in San Francisco and people will stop Googling in a couple years. They will work with a virtual assistant. So we need to make out of this virtual assistant a big friend for mama. Uh, is it like AI behind? Yes, it is AI behind that, but we work with real experts and building well sets on factuality, safety, and empathy, and over-educate uh, the AI with, with uh, well sets uh, from real experts. How do you apply different cultural uh, background yeah, we have just started from the U.S. market right now, but what, for example, right now I'm in a program of you startups for India, and that's something I'm going to be there in November to explore and meet with government officials and like medical providers, because when you're going to do and apply like cultural things, you need local people with a local culture, because the tone of voice you're communicating is the trick. 
because like the way we try to make it communicate is something that makes this connection when we because having our moms they say we don't understand and why trust and yeah trust. we have this connection with so this is something i aim to build because when my friends are calling me they're calling me from the heart and they don't need like big advice from me they need to be heard and s like from my heart like seeing and having this feeling that they are hurt and they have this stigma to ask questions and they know that I'm not going to be judging them and soul is not judging so the stigma especially in those cultures is something that really important because you don't bring out any questions you have out of the family even to your doctor because like the doctor is for the whole family so Sola is a safe place it's like a compassionate care solution for her so that's what we're trying to, to do uh, you work closely with psychologists yeah. and coaches. We have coaches. We have made uh -huh. a memorandum of understanding with Ericsson Coaching Institute. And right now, Katerina Lingold, she has ICF accreditation as well. And mm -hmm. we're implementing her techniques inside. And uh, uh, dolas, midwives. With midwives and obese, we're building, I call it, red flags because mm -hmm. um, I was the one who made the first non-profit organization in Belarus for premature babies who mm -hmm. were born before mm -hmm. their due date. Uh. So... 80% of prematurity is anxiety. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are building those red flags when we see that through the communication and semantic analysis of the communication, we see that we need to make mom a sign as a red flag that she needs to contact her medical provider right now. Because mm -hmm. there are cases when it's too late only because she didn't call her medical provider right now. Oh. So we don't give medical advice, but we build with them this like coverage. So whenever we see those red flags in communication, uh -huh. we need to send her to her medical. And we're actually working on the partner mode. Uh, a partner can be someone who you trust. Mm -hmm. It can be your husband, it can be your friend, it can be your doula. So they it can yeah. use the app yeah. as well. So that mm -hmm. they will see your traction actually. Mm -hmm. And they will get tips and tricks on how to support. And also the educate themselves. Yes. Like, you know, uh, I'm ugly. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, as I've been working with these big conferences uh -huh. with moms, 25% of all attendees were men. But usually all, all the education which men get, they get through woman. Mm -hmm. So she's the one, like, pinging him up. Look, I have found that. Or, like, the apps that we have for pregnancy and maternity, they're all, like, with pink hearts. Mm -hmm. And man is a bit shy to put it on his phone. That's why they're using it from a female yeah, yeah. mode. So that's something which is really important we have to yeah, put in. Yeah, I, I have just one uh, question now. Mm, well, parenting, uh, well, styles and approaches in different countries may vary uh, a lot. So how do you handle it? This is the game to the way that we don't tell you what to do. Uh -huh. We help you to find the way, the best way for you. So this is the kind of what coaches do, what doulas do. So when you come, for example, to doula and ask, uh, she's going to ask you, okay, did you make any birth plans? How do you want it to go? And so on. And you tell her about like how you want your pregnancy and postpartum and like labor go. She's not going to tell you, no, it's wrong. You have to do not this way. You have to do it's this way. Your yeah. culture and your She's going to ask yeah. you, mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and what uh, things do you know about this epidural or like cesarean if you don't it's not a medical case. Why did you pick it up? Mm -hmm. Why did you pick up cesarean instead of like, or mm -hmm. like, or if something goes wrong with your natural birth, like then what? Mm -hmm. So she's going to ask you questions. She's preparing you to different ways that might happen. Because one of the biggest things that doulas do actually in the postpartum, mm -hmm. if a mom has gone through the labor where everything has gone wrong, not the way she was planning in her head. Uh -huh. The biggest thing that she can do, and everyone who is close to her, is to help a woman to come out of her labor with a feeling that she has succeeded the best the way she ever could in this particular situation. Mm. Because like most of the depressions in these cases are because of this feeling that I didn't manage the way I had. And then she doesn't feel this happiness from meeting a child. She doesn't feel this happiness. Like, I had a friend, and I have her, like, we've been friends for 15 years. She, everyone in my, like, all my friends, they were mostly home births, natural births, blah, 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 because we've been practicing mindfulness for many years and so on. And she had uh, a hospital birth, 
which was not the way she was planning. Half a year after the pregnancy and the postpartum, she was calling me on the phone and shouting at me. She was like, I hate you. I've been your best friend for 15 years, but I hate you right now. I was like, what has happened? And she was like, look, I have everything. Support, husband who is coming back at four. My mom, my dad who are helping me. Money, I don't need to work. And I feel myself so fucking bad. And I cannot even tell that to anyone. Because you are always standing in front of me because you were bringing your children up alone with no help, with no money, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, this is the first step we do to say, I am in a postpartum depression. Yes, I have to do something with that. Mm -hmm. Because like this feeling when you have everything, then you don't have even an ability to say that you're suffering. That's not what I was ex expecting. That's not what I wanted. That's not how I felt it to be like really good. The stigma that if you have it all, you have to be happy. You have a baby, you have everything. You should why be don't happy. you smile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's interesting how Sola helped uh, to ruin these misconceptions. You know, if you use uh, like questions and uh, uh, she is uh, not, uh, let's say, guiding you if she doesn't have any ideology of the... Acceptance, Tanya. Acceptance saying it's okay to feel like that. So when uh, this is the very second I told her, it's okay to feel like this. 80% on the earth of women feel the same way. They don't feel this happiness. But it's what's okay. wh what if a uh, woman, for example... Um, I don't know, in, in Muslim countries or in uh, patriarchal uh, family and uh, she even uh, doesn't have understanding that she can ask for help and that uh, she should ask for help. And uh, if no one, let's say, guiding her into this uh, direction, how she gonna survive? I mean... I think that these are going to be the corner cases that we go will particularly with the experts uh, in those countries because these cultural things but the good thing about that is the architectural side of soul or the back side of soul is structured that way so that it will be much easier to educate the ai in this particular direction and s this cultural thing so ai made as a big like s big thing in here that's why like we are partners with google they they like the idea of building a big mama together with google and of course, we will need local partners to understand the cultural thing about that because this is something maybe they will need help and support. They might have different aspects of like problems. They might be okay because they have been grown up and brought up in a culture where her main purpose is to give birth and she has the support of mama, aunt, her sister, her friend, and it's okay. Then she might be like tough in building relationship with her husband or something. So we're gonna see. Uh, what is the stage right now? And for example, how uh, our audience uh, can help? You know, you or uh, can use. Uh, yes, that's gonna be really great. Like we have already twenty five, I think, thousand users inside, and uh, we are for uh, US right now. I can send the promo code inside of our chat, for example, for a free version. We have just started the money and if you could just go through and give us a feedback because in the chat you even can give the feedback or most of you are working in the IT and you can just give us some advice from like onboarding and things like that it's just right now we have been like focused only on pregnancy to show the good results on that and then to expand that because we already have questions from moms planning for pregnancy trying to conceive and those who are, have already given birth with us so as soon as you We'll try it and see and give us a feedback. It's going to be really valuable for us because, like, w the PR company that we are going to build together with Natalia Vadianova, she's our goodwill ambassador and like investor actually, is going to be to work with the stigma of like destigmatizing maternity mental health in general. And the biggest thing that I'm going to do in PR is that we have not built, we are building together with you the more dialogues we're gonna have, the more feedback from our moms we're gonna have, the quicker we're gonna build it together with moms. Because working together with you is like, each of those cases, as you said, is gonna be like over-educating the AI, and we're gonna go quicker. 
Yeah, I, I want also to, uh, you know, uh, move slightly to your uh, personal uh, work-life balance uh, because you've uh, shared your journey. I didn't know uh, such uh, in deep uh, and uh, it's truly inspiring and uh, thank you for being honest uh, uh, with all of us. Uh, and it's really challenging, you know, you're like a single mom in new country, balancing uh, one job and the startup, and then two boys, which are really young. It's not that uh, they are already like super independent. Uh, and I know that you have some routines, I mean, which help in you, of course, you shared some tips, uh, yes, uh, on switching the attention. But what kind of uh, routines in balancing this uh, work and personal life you found the most uh, effective to you? I have a very strong inner structure. I mean, like, it was not always. I was building is, is, as a habit. Because uh, uh, I used to, to see how burnout is coming close to me. And uh, I was not in a burnout, but I was in a depression, so I know this feeling. So through these many years of building projects, uh, I'm not working on Saturdays and Sundays, never. So if I only have some calls that, uh, for me, looking like not a job, where we, for example, with some people on the team, have to discuss some things that like, we can discuss and we cannot discuss, it's okay. So then it doesn't look for me as a work, so I feel like it's just something like a tea with a friend. So this is my kids' time, so I don't walk on Saturdays. And I don't walk in the evenings. So right now, when we are establishing the relationship with the, uh, Google, so there are sometimes occurring uh, calls in the evening, but it's an exception. It's not a rule. So after I pick up my kids in the evening, I don't work. This is their time. Because if, if I break this balance of paying attention to my kids, then I cannot handle them. As soon as they are filled up with my attention as much as they need it, they are okay. So I have a strong structure. Then I have very strong rules within my kids. I think that in the parenting, uh, rules are something which is number one. And the biggest rule is that I always pick myself first, like in an airplane, like I am, the main thing over here, if I'm gonna like, that was actually the thing that have taken me out of the postpartum depression. I was like, okay, if I'm gonna like drone right now, what's gonna be with them? Like, that's the only way I have to. So I was pulling myself out because I felt like if I draw, then it's over. So I need my energy to do that. So I'm always saying that if I go to sauna, like on when on Sunday we're going to sauna, or I do my some uh, like exercises or whatever, I always say to my kids, I have gone to, to make you a good mama. I'll be back, a good mama for you. <laughs> so right now I'm experiencing the most interesting and beautiful period of my life. My mom came to me for a couple of months and this is the first time in 10 years that I have this constant help with two more hands. Because for 10 years I've been growing up children myself. Mm -hmm. uh, food, uh, which is really things that are helping me a lot. I don't eat meat. Uh, I, I used to be vegetarian, then I add meat, then again, because this is the food that makes me, it lowers the level of energy and I feel like tough. And it's hard for me, like when we were helping the Ukrainian uh, students over there, I was fasting for 21 days. I was just drinking like grasses and water and so on. So these are like the things that are helping me out. Yoga, I do it regularly and everyone knows that I never skip the classes. So this is the rule. If I was really tired, like yesterday, for example, or the day before yesterday, or I have a conference, it means that tomorrow in the morning I'm gonna, gonna work harder. Because I need to take all this like difficult energy out of me. Uh, I stay on sadhu decks, uh, and like it's like 17 years I've been doing things with my body, so I'm always trying to make it like strong. I think that moms really need strong physical body. Somehow we have to do this. Is the rule for for myself. And with the kids, they also know that there are rules, and as soon as they follow the rules, we are best friends. 
Uh, I can be loud with them, but I'm never putting the aggression out because I don't have it. Because I do take my aggression out through the practices. So if I feel that I have something to come out, I will go to the mountains or go to the sea and shout for like 15 minutes. Like just take it out. So I know that I, I can feel my body and I, if I, I feel I have something out, I'm going to take it straight ahead. So I know that if I'm going to collect it, it's going to be worse. And the routine of sleeping. 10, 10 30, I'm done. Uh, I, <laughs> but I wake up at 5, 5, five, uh -huh. five sorry, so, but my body wakes up itself. Because so if you, for a while, it, it was the routine I was implemented, like, like physically pushing it into my body. Because mm -hmm. I, I know that if I don't sleep, like, two, three days my time, I'm like that. So I don't, I cannot concentrate, I cannot... Uh, I'm like exhausted and then I can start like being angry with my kids mm -hmm. or whatever. These are the first things I have to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's the third thing I talk to newborn mommies that just when you have a mom or a nanny or a husband, just sleep. <laughs> Fuck these home duties. Just sleep. So sleeping and then the morning routines, I wake up at 5, 5.30 till 7. Mm -hmm. I can do my yoga, I can do my have your uh, time. meditations, I can yeah. do reading, free writing, like whatever. And uh, it, it's like this shadow yeah, is yeah. something that I hold for. I feel like this is like my hand. Mm -hmm. If I'm losing this hand, I have no power to stay. Then I'm becoming mm -hmm. like that. And uh, the rules for the kids, like my older son has two rules when he brings up his friends inside. And actually from Friday to Sunday, I have a football team in my house. They are all like coming to me. They take the next toy or game only they have put the previous one on the place. Mm -hmm. And they do not leave the place before they clean it up the same way as it used to be. My son will not let anyone out before it's clean. <laughs> Two so times I was helping him <laughs> when they left. He was very tired and blah, blah, blah. He was like, why do I have to do that? It was not only me, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yes, I'm so sorry for you. I was helping him, but we finished cleaning up. Mm -hmm. So a couple of times of that, he knows he's not going to take anyone, let anyone out before it's, it's all done. And this makes you very strong borders. So that's why the kids like to come to my place, because they can do everything they want. They just need to follow two rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you actually communicate, you know, your... Uh, bound bounce or to your family members and to your work team. This is all from inside. Yeah, if you are, you know, if you're growing your startup, if you're working a lot and you have a high responsibility level, you cannot just, you know, say, okay, I'm done at six and nobody's just, well, uh, everyone just stops uh, paying they know, me. They know <laughs> it's their time. Uh -huh. So when I have to take that, mm -hmm. I excuse. I go and say, guys, I'm sorry. I need to ask you for help tonight. Because mm -hmm. you know, like, and I promised my son, like, it was interesting when we were moving over here, he was in a very beautiful school, which I built in back home in Belarus. And he was like crying, saying, no, I love this school. It was so beautiful. I said, give me half a year. I'm going to do you the, the same beautiful school over here. Mm -hmm. And I, I did it. In a half a year, I said, look, I have promised. Do you have it? He was like, yes. I said, okay. Because the little one, he takes after the older one. So whatever he, the older one is going for. Mm -hmm. And now uh, I told him, I'm building my startup. I need your help. Mm -hmm. Give me two years. One is over. <laughs> I have just one more. One more. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I come and ask for help. Uh -huh. Like, I don't say, like, this is obligatory. Or I don't tell him, you have to look after your little one because this is your obligation. No, this is my obligation. Uh -huh. I think that the main thing of this mindfulness is to take the responsibility for your life only for yourself. Mm -hmm. And to say, okay, here I manage, here I don't. Here I have time, here I don't have. But this is, like, my responsibility. And when I come and ask him, I say, I need your help, mm -hmm. because this is my responsibility, and I cannot handle it. Please help me. But you sometimes feel overwhelmed, you know? Yes, or and I like tell them. Like you sacrifice something. I tell them, yeah. I tell them. Mm -hmm. I lay on the floor and say, I'm done, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are like, oh, we wanted you to read us a book. I was like, no, I'm yeah. done. 
and I need some rest, switch it on on like mm -hmm. audio book or whatever, and just the main thing they need from me is this inner warmth. That's why I say that I charge myself through the weekends with them. They need their amount of attention, and they know that this is their time. Mm -hmm. If they don't get it, they're gonna fight. And even if you are too busy, they know that you love them. And I think that's the most important I part. call it an inner <laughs> Wi-Fi. Uh, I, told, I gave wifi. my <laughs> inner, my older son this uh, allegory that um, there was one psychologist who was working with us when he was small. She gave me a piece of those... Um, Nitki, um, uh, so, so, so the, the thing f to needling, needling yeah? yeah? So uh -huh. this little ball of those. Uh -huh. And we were with him, I was holding it, and he was holding this one, and he was going away from me. And I was like making it longer and longer and longer. Then he went to the other room, and I was still making it longer. And we were in different rooms, and I was like pulling it down. I was like, do you feel it? And he was like, yes. And then I was like, pull it off. And he was pulling, and I was like, mm, I feel it. And I thought, this is the connection that we have with you wherever I am. It's a Wi-Fi inside. Mm -hmm. So whenever you need me, just go into your heart and talk to me. I'm going to hear. And there were a couple of times that he was actually like calling me. And uh, I took the phone, and I was the first to call. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I was just about to call you. And I was like, I felt it. Mm -hmm. We have a Wi-Fi. And uh, that's, that is something which is helping. So uh, I'm trying to, to go with their feelings. That's why, like, all those guys are acceptable in my house because I know that in a couple of years they're going to go and turn in teenagers. And actually, my son was the one who was smoking electronic cigarettes in the school, and I, he was the first to tell me, and he was like, how stupid I was. I was like, yes. But he said, like, I didn't know that I could just come and tell you that I'm interested in that. I was like, come on. And they tell me all their secrets and their blah, 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 so I know because... Like in a couple of years, they're going to turn teenagers and I want to see what's going to happen in my house. Let it happen in my house. Okay? So I don't, I give myself these things of being relaxed about like very clean house or everything in a on timetable. It's okay to let yourself to make mistakes. I just fairly tell to myself, I cannot handle it today. Yeah. I cannot. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. <gasps> that was a beautiful book that I have read uh, uh, lately. It was The Path of a Sunshare List. And actually, when I read it, I felt like I live like that. That's actually the way of picking up not the things that you say yes to, but picking up the things you say no to. And then you just leave the priorities. I want them to be happy and healthy. That's all I need. That is much easier. This is really inspiring note, you know, to to, to finish uh, our fireside chat. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, this was uh, for me, for Gala, I think, f I hope for all of you, uh, really interesting uh, discussion. Thank you for this. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah. Pick your no, set your priorities. Uh, uh, and choose yourself. I yes. think that to choose yourself and take the responsibility. Because we were grown up in the feeling that responsibility is something bad because we were like punished for that. But responsibility is something really so good because you are the driver of your life. You put it to the way you want it to go. That's why this feeling of this is my responsibility, I handle or I don't handle, it's okay, whatever. Yeah, not be, be not being a victim, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, feeling uh, yeah. this burden. But sometimes it's okay to feel the <laughs> burden. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, if you wanted to, uh, to be a female, <laughs> manipulation a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I had a beautiful teacher for pregnancy. Actually, she was the one uh, who made the first courses for me when I was pregnant. And there was beautiful week of pregnant women together. We spent in a village. We were like doing all these like things about uh, pregnancy and labor and so on. And there was one last day of men coming. Men was sitting, and you know, like all those like pregnancy courses, men are like this, saying like they are gonna show these pictures of these bloody things and whatever. Mm -hmm. And she was like, "Okay, man, listen to me. I have three kids. I'm gonna have the fourth right now." 
all these things about, oh, I want strawberries, oh no, I want chocolate, oh no, I want salty fish, or whatever, is fucking manipulation. <laughs> Don't listen to them, and just be happy. And all the men were like this. <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much. That's funny.